So it is Dynasty Rankings Update Week at CBS Sports. By the end of the week, you'll be able to go to the Dynasty landing page, see updated quarterback, running back, wide receiver, tight end rankings. You'll see a new top 150 with a trade chart, and you will see, for the first time since May, an updated rookie rankings. Um, Because I thought, you know, there's surprisingly still a lot of people that do their rookie draft, like late in training camp or after the preseason and maybe that makes more sense than doing it in may when we make lots of dumb picks it's okay you make dumb picks in august as well three guys who rose for me and they're all wide receivers in the last month one of them obvious deandre hopkins going from wide receiver 46 to wide receiver 39 elijah moore from wide receiver 38 to wide receiver 31 and brandon Ayuk from wide receiver 32 to wide receiver 29 i want to start with Ayuk, adam because this 49ers offense this year is it's one of those that's frustrating. Like we think they're going to have a bunch of production, but it's definitely a too many mouths to feed situation. Somebody's going to lose out at their current ADP, whether it's Kittle or Debo or Ayuk or McCaffrey. But Dynasty, obviously, this this year you don't have to worry about that quite as much. And I think sometimes Dynasty managers getting get in trouble with really talented players ranking them too low because there's too many mouths to feed in their offense. There's been a lot of positive talk about Brandon Ayuk and how good he's looked this office off season. Do you think he could make the leap and be like a top 15 guy in the next year? So it depends because I, if I'm not mistaken, like after this season, San Francisco will have to like do some maneuvering to keep both Debo and Ayuk, I believe. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So if, and Debo's talked about how he didn't like how he played last year and he's totally, and I, I fully believe him like Debo is an incredible player, but like, If he doesn't play amazing or if he misses time again, like they might be more inclined to just, you know, extend Ayuk and and move on from Debo. And if that's the case, then there's less target competition going into 2024. Ayuk's already established himself, in my opinion, as one of the most underrated wide receivers in football. Talked about Deontay Johnson's route running ability. I think Ayuk might actually be, if not right there, like I might, he might be better. Like he's that good. Um, in terms of his ability to manipulate defenders. That's why he was really up there. I think he like 26% target share against man coverage. So, yeah, like, it is it is such a tough team to break down because, like, you look at Kittle, for instance. His splits when McCaffrey, Ayuk, and Debo were all playing full games were terrible, mm-hmm. for instance. But Ayuk was still at least a little bit steady. His, his touchdown luck was pretty... You know, it was, I guess, the opposite of Deontay Johnson, where he only had like five end zone targets, but scored like eight touchdowns. But again, that goes in line with him being able to get separation. I'm really high on Ayuk. Um, so it really does depend, though, if both him and Debo are there in 2024, I guess it would be. But um, overall, as a player, like, yeah, like if he ascended himself, we saw it last year. If he ascended even more and even higher this season, I would not be surprised. He's, he's that good. Chris, just real quick, and we'll move on to the next guy. But Brandon Ayuk or Deontay Johnson in Dynasty? Uh, I would go with Ayuk. I just think he has a more well-rounded skill set. So number two here, Elijah Moore, another guy who just like the drumbeat of off-season news and videos of him with Deshaun Watson up from wide receiver 38 to 31. Chris, this is a guy who had a good draft pedigree, flashed as a rookie, completely Mm -hmm. disappeared, but now goes to a team that wants him and has Deshaun Watson, who if he bounces back, could be one of the best quarterbacks in the NFL. Where where are you at on Elijah Moore? Is this, is this kind of boom bust number three wide receiver range right in the same range as Ayuk and McLaurin makes sense with him being three or four years younger than those guys? Or is this too high or too low? No, I think that makes sense. I, I think like Ayuk makes a little more sense as an obvious buy for with an eye on 2024, perhaps because of the contract situation that Adam was talking about, whereas more more or less seems locked in with the team that he's on. I guess Cooper you know, there's a chance that I don't know what his contract situation is, but he's old enough that you could see them potentially looking to move on from him after this year if things go south. So, yeah, I, I think both these guys, it makes sense the range that they're in. I mean, Moore had that. It was like a seven game stretch his rookie season where he was like, was he a top five wide receiver his last seven games? He yeah. was outrageously good. And that was playing, obviously, with Zach Wilson. And was Joe Flacco still the backup there? It was not great quarterback play so yeah it's it's entirely possible that we're six games into the season and we're viewing elijah moore as a top 20 wide receiver for both redraft and dynasty it's not the likeliest outcome but the combination of opportunity and talent is absolutely there yeah i I will say adam like one year ago i always keep 
keep uh, the running tab on the left side of my rankings of where I had guys ranked a year ago. And I just looked, Elijah Moore was wide receiver 20 for me. Yeah. <laughs> like I, I thought like one year ago, we were entering, entering into year two, and I was a little bit upset about the Garrett Wilson pick, but I thought, you know, they can just both be really good. Where, where are you? You still have quite a bit of hope for Elijah Moore? Yeah, and uh, not that I'm breaking news here, but I actually, I don't know how it happened in one of my home redraft leagues last year. I actually ended up with Garrett Wilson and Elijah Moore, and I, and I can fully fully say they were both not good one was very good um yeah so kevin stefanski keeps talking really highly of elijah moore they've been talking about moving him all over the formation um i believe amari cooper 2025 or 2026 his contract is up donald people jones though is after this season so Mm -hmm. um and i like what dpj did last year but yeah elijah moore should give them more flexibility with their offense more versatility and when i wrote the cleveland browns article for ftn fantasy as you'd expect, their offense really changed when Deshaun Watson took over. So from weeks 1 to 12, they were at 16% play action, 2% RPO usage, 56% shotgun rate, and 63% bunch formation. But in the weeks Deshaun Watson was under center, their play action rate went up to 26%. Their RPO usage went up to 5%. They were at shotgun 7% more often, and they went more spread offense. They were like bunch formation, like 30% less, which means more spread, more three wide, more ways to get Elijah Moore on the field. Um, I, I, I'm, I'm, it's, it's always scary buying into the hype during this time of year, but, um, I, between the change in offense and what we're hearing from Elijah Moore in, in Cleveland, I'm, I'm kind of in on it. That That's the thing though, is that like my, my gut instinct is just to fade any player that is getting highlight videos posted by so, reporters on so Twitter. So you're fading everybody in, in the league then, I guess. Yeah. Pre- I mean, it's just like. We've fallen for this so many times. Cortland Sutton this time a year ago is going to be like the pro- I'm going to stick with that example for the next five years because the 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 amount of evidence free hype that that guy got was was outrageous. And so I think generally speaking, it's probably smarter to avoid this guy looks great in camp. That means that should mean absolutely nothing to you. If a beat reporter says a guy is making plays fade them entirely i think the opposite should should mean more yeah i just i think you should look for like concrete details like Mm -hmm. with elijah moore the thing that i saw yesterday and obviously it's the first day that they're they're practicing and amari cooper wasn't even there but is that in their three wide receiver sets elijah moore was still playing the slot and that's one of the things that i want to keep an eye on with him because this is a team that historically has run a lot of two tight end 12 formation type of stuff and so if that's going to be the case being one of the two outside receivers is going to be a key. If he's coming off the field in 12 formation, it's going to be really hard. It's not impossible. Or Monroe St. Brown was coming off the field a lot in two wide receiver sets. His rookie season was still very good. But it's just, that's the thing I'm going to be keeping an eye on. It doesn't matter that it was just the first day, but if we get three weeks from now and it's still Elijah Morris, the slot guy in three wide receiver sets, and he's coming off the field in two two wide receiver sets, then I'll be a little bit concerned, at least for the 2023 value. I do think they will run way more three I think wide so this too. year because their 12 personnel rate actually went down last year too with the mm-hmm. first year without Austin Hooper there. And um, I, I think the the way their offense was looking from weeks 13, 18 last year where they ran a lot more shotgun, they ran more uh, 11 personnel. I think they run a lot more 11. I, I think that would be good, and, and really it makes sense. Like You can still throw it to David Njoku. 85 95 times and run three wide that, that nick chubb doesn't need two tight ends blocking him for him to be good you right. know his hit like uh his his metrics running from the shotgun formation were still elite so right okay third wide receiver deandre hopkins with the trade not the trade with the signing with the titans he, he was wide receiver 46 and this was i've got him up to wide receiver 39 he's an impossible player to rank for both rebuilders and contenders because he should be like 30 spots higher for contenders <laughs> but he is somebody who i was kind of discounting as old changing teams i'm not really that into it and then i went and looked last year at what he did with kyler murray and even what he did like to basically two yards per route run with 60 percent of his targets coming from colt mccoy and I think Trace McSorley. Yeah, and the, the Trace McSorley game, I think he had one catch on 10 targets or something. It was it was that wild game was so brutal because I was facing Tampa Bay's defense in fantasy that week. It was <laughs> it was so I, bad. So I I have zero evidence that DeAndre Hopkins has lost a step. 
And I think that there's a chance that he just goes into Tennessee and earns a 30% target share. Mm -hmm. And even if they throw the ball 500 times, that's still 160 targets. Um, So I guess we talked about go get a first for Jamison Williams if you still can. Adam, if you're a contender, like a true, true contender, and you've got a wide receiver spot that you wouldn't mind adding some some depth, are you willing to give up a first-round pick to go get DeAndre Hopkins? First is tough, but in general, I, I I do like Hopkins because Cliff Kingsbury's offense in Arizona, it was very frustrating because he just didn't move wide receivers around the formation. So in his three seasons with the Cardinals, Hopkins ran 89.6, 70, pretty much 80, 80, and then 62% of his routes just from the left side of the field. Like he rarely moved. And whether you think he's lost a step or not, I think we're at the point of his career where you want to play Hopkins inside more and not have him have to win on the outside at all times. So I think we're going to see that from Tim Kelly, who's obviously the OC there and was with Hopkins in Houston. So I'm excited for that. I think he plays a lot more of the slot kind of late late stage of his career. And Traylon Burks, they can do a lot with him still. But um, yeah, first is tough. But yeah, like if, if, you, if you view yourself as like the clear favorite and – Maybe even in season too, right? Like one of right. your wide receivers goes down, and Hopkins is there first four weeks or something, getting eight targets per game and a you know twenty seven percent target share. Yeah, and if you're all in, you know, late first, which you would expect it to be, I don't think it's crazy because I, I I agree with you that I don't think I don't think Hopkins is close to being done. No, yeah. and th- and that's the thing is you look at like aging curves and and they show that like thirty one is like man, very few wide receivers are good past thirty, and the thing is. That's true. Very few wide receivers are very good at 30. DeAndre Hopkins already was. So that's one of those things where like aging curves are relevant and players can drop off very quickly. We see that all the time. But if you're really good at 30, chances are you're still going to be really good at 31. You're still going to be really good at 32. Now, there's the chance of, of a big drop off and you should probably project them to be worse. And given the changing circumstances for Hopkins, that makes sense. But yeah, I, I think buying if you're a contender makes a lot of sense i've got a team with it's built around derrick henry austin eckler Devonte adams stefan diggs and tyler lockett might go throw an offer out for for deandre hopkins let's go all in you you might as i mean the rebuild's only you only two years. live once yeah that's the name of the league 